Hey, it's John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and it's The Entrepreneurial You, the show for dedicated and passionate Caribbean entrepreneurs seeking daily inspiration, brought to you by author, speaker, and award-winning entrepreneur, Henneka Wakis porter You must be prepared to ignite. Coming up on this episode of The Entrepreneurial You. I really love that you termed it like that because it goes back to, uh, you know, that compass again. You know, what do you really care about? Because if you're not true to you, you know, really staying kind of in the the zone of those things that are most important to you, then you're not going to thrive. You're going to constantly be pulled in directions that are not authentic and don't feel good to you. Hi, I'm Henneke watkins Portal, your inspirational leader and host of the Entrepreneurial You podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Jamaica Stock Exchange. And now let's go to today's episode. Episode 73 of the Entrepreneurial You podcast features one of the world's most tweeted people among digital marketers. She's a renowned marketing strategist, keynote speaker, and an international best-selling author, of Will the Real You Please Stand Up, Show Up, Be Authentic and Prosper in Social Media. She focuses on helping business owners grow a business they love while living the life they want. She's also internationally recognized as a thought leader in the social media space. Forbes named her as one of the top 10 social media power influencers. Her blog, KimGarst.com, is one of the top social media resources in the world. It is my absolute pleasure to make welcome the fabulous and dynamic Kim Garst to the Entrepreneurial You. Welcome, Kim. Yay, I am so excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Do you have any Jamaican friends? Except you know, me, no. I, I, and now I know you. I was just getting ready to say, now I know you. So yes, I have one new friend. Oh, amazing, yes. All right, so I'm really looking forward to our conversation, you know, being focused on authenticity and prospering in social media. Now, before we get into the meat of the matter, we'd love to talk about your journey, Kim, on becoming a social media power influencer. You've been named by Forbes as such. Uh, how did you get to that milestone? Just kind of take us through that journey. Well, yeah, I kind of tell people that I was kind of an, an accidental um, social media influencer or even an entrepreneur, period. You know, when I first started my business all 20 plus years ago, 25 plus years ago now, I just wanted to make a little extra money. You know, that's what a lot of us do when we were when we first start. I had no vision really for, you know, how possible I was and what I could create. It was just, you know, I just wanted to to uh, to, to make a pay the car payment. You know, that was kind of my vision initially. Um, and when I when I really focused on uh, getting started in social media and trying to leverage social media to attract people to my business, um, I struggled with authenticity. You know, I I stress so much over what I should post and what people would um, engage with that. I was froze a lot and I, I'm, I'm almost positive that there's probably somebody listening that they're like, oh my goodness, that is so me. I sit down in front of my computer and I don't know what I'm going to say. So I, I really had to find my voice. It's, it's funny because we, we have a voice. We just don't know how to translate it sometimes to the written word. And so that was a bit of a struggle for me. And then when I realized one day that I would just, I'm talking to a friend um, in the in this big wide world now, obviously, you know the whatever you say has the opportunity to be seen by you know a hundred people, a thousand people, you know, ultimately maybe even a million people, you know. But but to really step back from it and say, okay, it's not about the million people. Let's just focus on what I would say if I was standing right in front of somebody I cared about, and that changed my world. Uh, once I started doing that. Then my um, engagement went through the roof. You know, the conversations I started having were amazing. It was just that mindset and that breaking through that kind of that barrier of don't stop stressing over the perfect post, you know, just put, 
share from the heart. What is authentic to you? What do you care about? What do you want to connect around? Um, and in many cases, it's not about our business. You know, mm-hmm. it's about stuff that other people care about in life. Mm-hmm. So it, in other words, there is hope for persons who are listening right now and they're thinking, oh my gosh, that is really so me. You know, I'm not sure what I need to post. I'm not sure, you know, what persons want to hear. But then the strategy that you eventually nail is just speak to that one. Because when you speak to that one, you find that there are others like that one who will become part of your tribe. So interesting um, observation and where to, you know, that brought you to where you are now. Absolutely. And I think that's the key. You know, like I say, we, we sometimes get so hung up on you know, what do you put out there? Do I, you know, does it have to be about my business? Does it have to be, you know, this, that, or the other thing? And then we don't really share from a place of, of authenticity, you know, which I think is really, I mean, it is the, it's the secret sauce to success on social media is just showing up and being who you are. Yeah. And, and and like you said that we all have a voice, but it's to actually interpreting that voice, translating that voice from all of our heads onto the, you know, into the written word and, you know, onto the screen and to remain true to who we are and not feel like, you know, because if you're doing something and you're not true to yourself, others are going to pick up on that, you know, that you're not being authentic and then you're not going to get the effect that you want or have the effect that you want. Absolutely. Totally agree. So let's now look at your book, which is, I love the title of it so much. Will the real you please stand up, show up, be authentic and prosper in social media? First of all, how did you derive that title? Well, when I, um, well, let me back up for a second. When I started working with uh, entrepreneurs and business owners and even brands, Um, to help them show up in social media in a way that generated results, I realized that there was one core uh, and and majorly missing element from their, uh, their message or how they were showing up in the social space. And that was that they just were trying to be that perfect person. You know, they really didn't Um, They really didn't have a sense of authenticity and that came across and people weren't, uh, you know, the people that they were trying to attract was not attracted to them because it was just fluff, you know, it wasn't or, or it didn't matter to them, you know, and I think when you're trying to attract people to you in the social space, again, most of the time, it's not about our product or service initially, it's about connecting to people uh, in a way that matters to them. And they have no frame of reference for our businesses initially, most of the time, especially if we're not a major brand already and we don't have brand recognition. Um, But you even see major brands sometimes making the same uh, era where they just weren't showing up in a way that that connected with people. So I came up with the the title of of this because it was about, you know, being, um, you know, real. What who is the real you stand up? You know, if it's if it's a a one person, if it's a solopreneur or if it's a business that has, you know, it's a small business that has a small team or if it's a brand, the concept was still the same. You have to show up and be um, who you are and let your message shine. So that's how the the name of the book was uh, generated. It was it really focused around a core problem that I, I think that a lot of people have when it comes to leveraging the power of social media to grow. And of course, that pretty much answers the question of why was there a need for the book? Um, you know, it's uh, it, it's still true today. I mean, uh, the book is a couple of years old now, and it's still the number one problem that people have when it comes to getting started and actually leveraging the power of social media to connect to people, to attract people, and ultimately to serve people in a way that generates revenue. So it all kind of ties together. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the specific schemes that you touch on? I tell a lot of stories, uh, starting at the beginning about brands in particular, you know, where lots of times we think, well, we're, you know, we're just a small business or, you know, I'm a solopreneur. So this stuff doesn't apply because big brands, they've got it all nailed down. They've got it figured out. And so I talk about some specific brand stories that, um, you know, where they made a, a major mistake and it cost them big time. And we can learn from those uh, lessons, you know, where, you know, you see the differences and, you know, um, you know, some of the brands that, you know, really fall in, uh, and, 
and really made some huge mistakes when it comes to being authentic and, and you know, having that uh, authenticity show up in their in their business and in their marketing efforts. So, um, I, like I say, I think we can learn a lot from that. Um, there's also a lot of exercises in the book that helps you walk through trying to find your own voice because you know, you, it, it sounds ridiculous when you say you have to figure it out, but you kind of do, you know, you have to figure out what, how you want to show up and, you know, what matters to you and how you're going to put that out there into the world to attract the people you want to attract. And you talked about exercises. So of course, I'm very curious to hear um, if there's any of those that you want to share with us that we can actually practice right now as we're pretty much all, all of us on social media. You know, we talked about earlier about, you know, what, what really, does matter uh, to to you, and I, I focus a lot in uh, a lot about this uh, and a lot of the things that I share. And when it comes to you know showing up in the social space, what are your top five things? You know what what are the top five things that you care about and order them? Like you know maybe it's faith, maybe it's family, maybe it's um, you know for me my my business was you know one of the last things. But if I fulfilled the things at the top of my five, you know, then it would uh, drive my business. You know, if I stayed true to some of the things like, you know, faith for me is number one, um, family is number two. You know, so a lot of those uh, giving back and helping others, that's a big part of it's way more important to me than um, than the money. But if I do that, then the money will come, you see. So that's kind of one of the things that I really focus on is what's your compass, your own, if you want to call it moral compass or your own, you know, what, what is it that you care about? And then that's where you start when it comes to figuring out your voice and what you share in the social space. You know, a lot of people ask me about my faith and why do I share that so openly? Because it's a core part of my compass. And if I left it out, then I would be, I, I wouldn't be being true to me and, and I wouldn't be authentic. Let's, yeah, let's talk about that because for many of us, that is true. But then at the same time, there is this level of, you don't want to be judged because nobody wants to talk about faith or you think that nobody wants to um, talk about faith and, and nobody wants to dwell on that because then you're seeing as religious and, and, and all of that and people can think that that's a turn off. How do you get over that hurdle? Because I know that there are many persons. I mean, for me, my faith is is the number one driver too, right? And 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 I must tell you, I must be honest and say that there are times when I kind of think twice about sharing some things about my faith. I mean, you know, I'm a firm believer in God and everything, and I share that. But there are some, you know, to get to a deeper level and to share about my faith. Sometimes I think, you know, how can I not be so sounding so spiritual? and sounding so religious, you know? Yes, and you're exactly right. And that's what uh, so many people, and you articulated it so well, the fear that we have that we're going to be judged based on our faith, right? Or things that we put out there. But what I did to kind of get over that hurdle is um, I don't do it from a place of um, I'm trying to, you know, change your mind or try to pull you into my faith. I do it from a place of, this is this is me. This is what I care about. And um, and, and, you know, when we're an entrepreneur and if we are faith based and we do understand that there is a higher power and maybe not everybody else does, that's OK. You, you have to be OK. So my place of sharing comes from a place of this is about, you know, my faith, not about um, trying to project and or change your vision or your um, your faith. You know, if you if you're an, uh, you know, if you're an atheist, OK, I, I, I value you just as much as somebody who is, you know, proclaimed Christian, just because your opinion is different than mine. As long as you accept my opinion uh, and my faith uh, or my position on my faith, I'll accept your position. And that's the way I, I've come at it. We have so m much intolerance today for other people's uh, religion or differences of opinion or whatever it is. For me, I'm very accepting of other people's belief systems, regardless of what they are. And I expect the same kind of thing. And that's kind of the way I've I've approached it. And going back to if we are faith based, we know the power of having um, God or Jesus or whatever you call it, the, you know, uh, the universe. 
we know the power of that in our businesses. So don't leave it at your at the door. That's really where the power is. And, you know, I read a lot about the law of attraction and everything and, and the universe and, law, you know, attracting and we're attracting things to us and everything. And once I believe that, I also am very mindful that God is the creator of the universe. And yes, we're not talking, you know, we, we, we're talking about social media, but it these are some of the real things that people struggle with and struggle to be authentic about um, even beyond social media. So we're not, we're not digressing really. You know, one of the things that um, I would say too, if you're, if you are fearful of, you know, kind of putting in, and whether it's faith or whether it's, you know, anything that you feel is maybe not, you know, something you would want to share, there are some things maybe you don't want to share and I, I totally understand that, but faith um, in particular, uh, you know, I've had people approach me that don't believe the way I do, but they um, appreciate that I'm courageous enough. And that's the word they use to share that and, you know, put to put myself out there and to put my faith um, out in front and, you know, talk about things that, um, you know, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't do. So it's, you're not here to serve everyone. What I am, what I've done by sharing my faith is it attracts what I feel are the right kind of people to me. And it's not just about attracting other like-minded, you know, quote unquote Christians or other quote unquote, um, you know, religious people or spiritual Integrity, people. right? It's about, right. It's about showing up in a way that's true to you and not stepping, mm-hmm. you know, not um, deviating from that just because you're afraid that someone else will judge you for it. So show that's the whole the whole point of being authentic. You got to show up and be authentic. Stand on your truth and share that truth. You will attract the right people. And if you repel some people, that's okay too. You're not meant to serve those people. Thank you so much, Kim. You know, I'm, you can tell I'm really enjoying this discussion. We should have taken our break a few minutes ago, but anyway, we're going to break right here and let me read a review before. And this review is, of course, in um, iTunes on the Apple podcast. So this review comes from Mike EOD, username Mike EOD out of the USA. And he says, I found this to be quite inspiring. Keep up the great work. Remember, please, I'm looking forward to receiving your ratings and your reviews. And if you write me a review, please send me an email at hennikawatkisporter at gmail.com. Because unless you send me, I wouldn't know, you know, I'd have to go individually in all these other um, Apple um, countries that Apple is to find that review. So if you've left me a review, please send me an email at hennikawatkisporter at gmail.com. Leadercast Woman 2018 is happening October 12 at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel. Attend Leadercast Woman 2018 and learn how you can be a leader who motivates people and champion ideas in ways you never thought possible. Register now at hennikawatkisporter.com or call 876-849-2571 to claim your 20% discount for a limited time only. That's hennikawatkisporter.com or 876-849-2571 to claim your 20% discount for a limited time. We needed to raise capital, but our experience with local financial institutions was that they were cautious and slow to act, and interest rates were far too high. We had real concerns about financing our business through outside equity investors, and the possibility of interference. Could we get a fair valuation for our business? We had our own ideas about the business and its value. Should I go the traditional route of bank financing or should I try the Jamaica Stock Exchange? So we made a call and experienced transformation of our business through conversations. I'm John Mafood, CEO of Jamaican Teas, and we're listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Give us a call today at 876-967-3271 to begin your transformation through conversation. We want to see your company listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. So you want to start your podcast, but you don't know where to host it. Go to hennikawatkisporter.com and claim your one month free of podcast hosting on Blueberry. 
Or if you already have your host but aren't getting statistics on your podcast, you can claim one month free stats from Blueberry at HennekaWatkinsporter.com. That's HennekaWatkinsporter.com. Go right now and claim your one month free statistics. Welcome back. And we before we went to the break, I'm speaking with Kim Gars. Kim is a renowned marketing strategist. She is keynote speaker, international best-selling author, and so much more. Forbes named her one of the top 10 social media power influencers. So it's uh, it's been really great talking with you, Kim, and just touching on some areas that persons perhaps may struggle with being authentic. And I think heading, we didn't plan to go there, but heading the direction of talking about faith, that's just one of the areas that persons may struggle with regarding authenticity. Uh, authenticity. Um, my next question is in this area, in, in, in this age rather, where people feel like they are forced and picking up from where we left off, they're forced to be someone that they're not so that they can be seen. How can we be authentic while thriving at the same time? Because it's all about thriving, not just surviving, but thriving while we're at it. I really love that you uh, termed it like that because it goes back to, uh, you know, that compass again. You know, what do you really care about? Because if you're not true to you, you know, really staying kind of in the the zone of those things that are most important to you, then you're not going to thrive. You're going to constantly be pulled in directions that are not authentic and don't feel good to you, which is going to, again, put you in a place of uncomfortableness, one. And two, it's really not going, because it's uncomfortable, you're you're not going to step into that. You know, anytime we are asked to do things that, you know, you know, outside of our comfort zone, we tend to shy away from those things. So when you're out there trying to be something you're not, um, it's only a matter of time before you're found out. You know, you either out yourself or somebody else out you. Um, so you you really have to figure out what you care about and what you are going to show up in the world um, if, from the standpoint of those things. You know, how are you going to put yourself out there uh, if it's faith, if it's your family, if it's, you know, caring about others and showing up and, you know, uh, giving value back. That's always, I think, a part of, you know, sh- uh, building a successful business is serving, you know, first, don't sell, serve. Um, but the point being, you know, from the social media s- uh, perspective, and and I think this goes deeper, you know, than just showing up in the social space. I think it re- is uh, an outward reflection of, you know, everything in our business, how we conduct ourselves in those things that we stand on, you know, call on principles or, you know, your compass or your morals or whatever. Those things are a part of every facet of our business as long as we stay true them, to true to them and true to ourselves. And then we'll we'll always show up and be authentic. It'll be much easier to figure out what you care about and show up and and you know really fulfill those spaces in a way that attracts people to you. We are pretty much on the tail end. We're going, we're, we're heading into park. <laughs> and I would love to get from you, Kim, your final thoughts. In addition to your final thoughts, I'm going to ask you to share information. I know that you have a opt-in on your website that persons can get some freebies, right? I'm going to ask you to share that, share your final thoughts, as well as how might my listeners, my peak performers be in touch with you? Well, I just would like to say, uh, don't be afraid of being who you are. You know, I think a lot of times we do get stuck in, you know, watching other people and seeing how they're showing up. And then, you know, well, well, wow, I need to do that or I need to do the other thing or I can't do that. They're being successful because they have this trait and I don't have that. Don't get wrapped up in watching what everyone else is doing. Worry about what you're doing and how you can show up and what you bring to the table, um, because that's ultimately how you're going to uh, prosper at higher levels than you currently are. And um, as it relates to figuring out, finding me, um, you can pretty much find me anywhere in the social space. My name is Kim Garst, um, and my website is kimgarst.com. And I do have a brand new, uh, recently updated um, vid- live video toolkit on my website. You can see it uh, if you go to kimgarst.com uh, or kimgarst.com forward slash blog, either or. And um, that is one way, honestly, live video is probably the fastest way to show up and be authentic and ultimately prosper because it's the fastest path to the no like and trust factor. 
because people get a sense of who you are very quickly. And I highly encourage you to use live video in your business. Thank you so much, Kim. This is a conversation with Kim Garst. Of course, she is marketing strategist, keynote speaker, international best-selling author of the book that we've talked about earlier, Will the Real You Please Stand Up, Show Up, Be Authentic and Prosper in Social Media. And of course, like I've mentioned before, and you're going to hear it on the, on the, on the um, podcast as well as in the show notes, that she is has been named as one of the top 10 social media power influencers. Kim Garris, it has been my absolute pleasure speaking with you. I wish you every success as you continue to thrive and continue to impact our world. And same to you, Hanukkah. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to share. Um, I love making a difference. So thank you so much for having me. We have come to the end of another great episode of the Entrepreneur You podcast. Remember to subscribe in Apple Podcast and download all the episodes that you would have missed if you have not already subscribed and downloaded the episodes and play them to the end as well because good stuff is always at the end too. So do that as well as go and leave a rate and review right now. I'd appreciate that. It helps a lot because I put a lot of effort into creating this free content and it does help when I know that it is of significant value to you. So show your love by going to Apple Podcasts and just leave a rate and review. And when you leave that review, do send me an email at hennikawatkisporto at gmail.com because I'd love to be able to read them in an upcoming episode. And if I'm not notified, I won't know it's there because unless you go into all the different stores in Apple, there is no way that I can actually know that a review was left or a current review was left. So it's important that when you leave your review, you send me an email, let me know about it so I can go look for it and read it live on an episode of the Entrepreneur You podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Henneke Watkins Porto. Remember, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. What good?